some kind of sticky business. Okay, I got one side panel totally pitched. It, it amazes me they figured out this material and how well it works. It, it, it is something one has to maintain. So they had to be repitched every spring, sometimes a couple of times during the season. So there's a maintenance part of it, but it does seal the canoe up. One side's done and I, I got Kathy's gonna come out and drag herself away from the gardens this morning. She's gonna come give me a hand to uh, cook up some, some new pitch and help me pitch the other side. Uh, one of the things I do when I'm just, and I am getting awful close to having this thing in the water, is I put it up off the ground on some blocks, and I'll half or three quarters fill it full of water, and then I can get in underneath, and I can see if there's any drips. So if there's a drip, there's going to be a leak that goes the opposite way when it's floating. So I can mark those and, and repitch a few spots that may be a spot in the bark, although I don't think so, it's such thick bark, uh, but it may be something that I created in the process of building it. So we make sure that the, the tub of it, if you would, isn't going to leak any water. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll uh, get at the other side. What I'm doing here is I'm just putting a, a bit of a bevel on that so it makes a little smoother line, use a little less pitch. I still have the gores to do after, a couple of little things to fix up. Neat part of Birch Park Canoe Building, if it, if it isn't right, you can generally fix it. And I probably should have cut the stems off and it would have taken me another week and I would have had proper stems. So front one's pretty good, back one I'm not happy with as I mentioned, but it's gonna float. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be getting more pitch I think, but I've got enough uh, for Kathy and I to do this side. So gotta make a couple of tools. So kind of sticky business, and um, and as I'm progressing, these get pretty pretty nasty, and they're sticking to your fingers and stuff. So made a couple of new twizzle sticks, one for Kathy, one for me. Um, some people are pretty impressed by complicated machinery or tools. The simpler it is, in my opinion, the better it is, and yeah, it doesn't get a whole lot simpler in a couple of dowels. Anyway, I think my pitch is ready, and uh, we're going to go at this side. This, this may look a little rude, me spitting on my finger, but what it does is it allows me to form it and push it in between the threads or the stitching, the root stitching, and, and I can form it and it doesn't stick to my finger. <laughs> Otherwise I'd have a gob on it, I don't know, size of my fist. Almost there. Just the gores. Just the gores and the bow and the stern and I think we need more spruce gum. So what Kathy's working on now is we're, we're pitching the gores and if you'll recall at the start we had to cut slits in that beautiful piece of bark to accommodate its curving up and into a point at both ends. So it's uh, just a flush joint. We put a little V in it to give us a slightly bigger bead of caulking if you would or pitch and she's going to work that right in she's working it right down into the sheathing that's on the inside of the canoe so that's where we're going to get our seal from the last and i mean the very last piece of lacing that needs needed on this canoe so basically i'm just lashing because my inner gunnel is too thin there to put in my square peg um, I'd split it out, so I'm lacing um, the two gunnel caps just at the very uh, bow and stern, and yeah, last one.
There's, there's an old saying that haste makes waste. And uh, I, I believe it was Benjamin Franklin. He, he came up with a lot of them. And so yesterday in my haste to finish the canoe, because I thought I might get it in the water, I had enough uh, gum harvested and boiled down. And in my haste, I added too much fat. So way too runny. So didn't have any more <laughs> gum. So I spent all yesterday afternoon seeking high and low to find enough um, spruce gum to, to sort of um, thicken, up, thicken up my pitch, if you would. Uh, anyway, we're going to do a little test here and see. I'm hoping we've, uh, we've got it now. Well, I'm waiting for this to harden. I just, just thought I'd... Some, someone wrote in and commented um, in the comment section that uh, the last episode was our 100th episode. And, I hadn't kept track, but uh, that's almost uh, one a week for two years, because um, we've been at this two years now. And uh, what what I enjoy more than the actual crafting of cabins and trying to live 1700s and building canoes and doing all this crazy stuff is, is the comments that people send in. So uh, it's been absolutely fascinating. In fact, I start my day by, by looking at the comments that people have made. So people have shared their... Uh, family history with me, their ancestry. We've got people that have commented that they, their ancestry can be traced back to the first colony in America, Jamestown. Others that say they came over on the Plymouth Rock ships. Uh, I have a brother-in-law that's traced his ancestry back to that ship. Anyway, it's fascinating, but uh, there's one woman, and I, I won't bring up her name, we'll just call her M, but she she comment has commented on every video, and she's She's quite profound, and she, she quotes Aristotle, she quotes Thoreau and Emerson and all the greats, but she sent one in the other day that really uh, all tickled me pink. She, uh, she said, uh, she, she quoted Proverbs, and she said, a harvest, a harvest of peace is produced by a seed of contentment. And I, I don't think I've read a quote that strikes me uh, any deeper, because uh, living back here, doing what we do, trying to live 1700s, uh, it is a, it is a seed of contentment, and uh, we're going to have one hell of a harvest out of all this. Anyway, let's see if my uh, my pitch is going to work this time. Nope, it shatters. So, so what we got to do now? We got to add some more fat. We don't have enough fat in it now, so I go from one extreme to the other. But I got fat. I don't have any more spruce pitch. So I'm going to get some more fat in it. The moment of truth. So it, it all culminates today. Um, I was asked how, how long uh, I spent on the build, and to be honest, I didn't keep track of it, but I, I would say 400 plus hours. Anyway, I have three tests to do today. Number one, does it float? And it's past that test. I got her in the water here, and it's floating just fine. It's nice and level from side to side, end to end. So um, the next two tests are a little more cr critical. The most criti uh, critical of them would be, does it leak? So I'm gonna go for an hour, maybe two hours paddle. It's a pretty big lake. And I'll go to the other end and back and we'll see um, We'll see if I got any water in it. And then the third and, and important for tripping in the thing is how does it handle? So yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna push off. <laughs> 